Welcome to ITN Enhance. This is an innovative training network project funded by the European Community. The framework is composed by both universities and industrial partners from all around Europe. The aim of the project is to train a new generation of creative and innovative early stage researchers in the topic of energy harvesting from thermal and vibrational sources. In this video, we will see how it is possible to power up a small sensor from vibrational noise, exploiting lead-free piezoelectric materials. Piezoelectricity is a property of a specific class of materials. Direct piezoelectric effect appears when the material is deformed or strained. Because of its atomic structure, a displacement of charges will arise. It is possible to collect those charges with electrodes and convert them into a voltage. With this approach, we want to exploit materials like lithium nibid, not containing lead that is toxic for the environment and the human body. My role in this project is to design and fabricate the structures that are optimizing the deformation of the piezoelectric material. Usually we take advantage of flexural deformation or bending of a cantilevered beam. We use simulation tools to predict the behavior of such devices. After simulation, we start the process of microfabrication. In this phase, the piezoelectric material is bonded to a silicon substrate, and the electrodes are patterned on the surface to collect the voltage. Finally, the samples are diced and installed on clamping structure to benefit from the external vibrational excitation. This is, for instance, a prototype ready to be tested. This is our setup to test the prototype. What we need is a shaker, that is a tool to simulate the vibrations, a voltage generator to activate the shaker with an input sinusoidal wave, an oscilloscope to keep track of the voltage input from the generator and the output from the prototype, and at last, a circuit that is converting the voltage from AC to DC. The DC voltage, eventually, will power up our radio frequency sensor. This is an example of voltage response from the prototype. Normally, the best performances are obtained at resonance frequency, when the material undergoes maximum displacement and deformation. Here, the shaker is activating the piezoelectric bender. On the oscilloscope, we can see the voltage input and output at resonance frequency. Now we are considering the voltage output that has been converted to DC. The capacitors in the circuit will be our batteries to power up the sensor. In the graph, we can see that for different capacitance values, we have different time of charging. When the rectified DC voltage reaches a saturation point, the capacitor is fully charged and ready to be used. With the multimeter, we are monitoring the charging process of the capacitors in the circuit. Once the voltage is above 3 volts, we can actually power up the radio frequency sensor. When the voltage on the capacitor is enough, we can close the circuit pushing a button to send a signal to the receiving computer. The voltage will drop from its open circuit value to a lower value due to the electrical load of the sensor. The additional curves are representing how the voltage drop changes for different capacitors. We can now push the button to power up the small sensor and send the radio frequency signal. The receiving computer will now collect the information required. In the next future, we will implement new design of structures and optimize material performances. This demonstration of vibrational energy harvesting was possible thanks to shared efforts of UFC Besançon and INSA Lyon. Enhance science in hybrid energy harvesting technologies. Thank you for watching.